The biggest technical challenge when learning gypsy jazz guitar is how to play notes going up from thin strings to thick strings, like this. Especially when you have double down strokes. A rule of gypsy jazz guitar is when you start playing on a new string, you start with a down stroke. So you get these situations that are really difficult on the guitar. The reason you do it has to do with the angle of your right hand. Your wrist has to be at an angle that does not allow you to start on upstrokes. It's just impossible mechanically to get there. So what we need to do is train ourselves to be able to execute uneven numbers of notes per string going up, like threes and ones and fives. Here is an exercise to start doing this. So what I want you to do is take a look at just this three note pattern. Now I'm gonna play it in a loop. The picking here is down, up, down. Now the one thing I want you to do is start thinking about it rhythmically. These are triplets and here are the beats. One, two, three, four. So exercise one is just keeping that in mind and internally subdividing into triplets, going triple it, 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 before you even start trying to do it. Now what I want you to do is skip over the second triplet and play a shuffle rhythm or a swung eighth note. Pa, 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 like a heartbeat. In terms of the notes I'm playing, I'm gonna skip over that G sharp here, the fourth fret, and just play the fifth fret, which is the downbeat, and then that third fret, which is going to be the last triplet, and it's gonna be both down strokes. So I'm gonna go down, 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 down. So you have a big down and a small down. I mean that physically. I'm thinking about it like down, 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 down. Now what you want to get used to is having a comfortable motion. Start with one note. Add that other. Now that middle note has to do with keeping that exact motion and just adding an upstroke on the way to it. Right, so we're going. It's really impossible to slow down past a certain point because the motion stops having momentum. But I'm always trying to fold that back into that quarter note pulse on the beats. So here's exercise one. Down, 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 down. That's the idea. So for exercise two, I'm gonna take that three note pattern and now move it to the B string, and I'm gonna move it just chromatically up, not thinking harmonically yet. Here is the pattern. And then I'm going to just move it up to the sixth fret, seventh fret, eighth fret, ninth fret. Just make a little trip around the guitar that way. One, two, three, four. So this kind of an idea gets you working on three notes per string on a single string. Maybe after you get the chromatic shape down, try to move it in a scale. Here's a C major scale. That kind of thing. So it's a pretty good way of getting connected to the beats and dividing into triplets. One thing I should note about exercise two is that unlike exercise one, when you're playing the B string, you're using a rest stroke on the beat. That first note on the fifth fret. See what I'm doing with my right hand? I'm cutting through the string and I'm pushing against that high E string. This is something you can't do when you're playing the high E string because there's nothing to rest against. So you just approximate that distance. I kind of play through the string and sort of bang this pinky bone against the guitar to stop the motion. And a lot of times with these guitars you get a nice love mark here from missing, right? So when it's the B string, that first of the three motions is a rest stroke. The second is an up stroke. The third is that half rest stroke or whip or whatever you want to call it. There are three kind of whipping motions. 
And this is where it gets really tricky and it's not something you need to memorize, it's something you need to have your body memorize. So you just need to practice it. In exercise one, we discuss the first kind of whip which is staying in the same string. So the whip is the downstroke motion that happens on that last triplet. So if I'm whipping to stay, that's what I'm doing. I have a big stroke and this small stroke that just gets me ready for the big stroke. If I'm whipping to go down a string, meaning from a thick string to a thin string, then it's more like a sweep. It's kind of like a second rest stroke. You see, I'm leaning on the next string and waiting. But if I'm whipping to go up a string from a thin to a thick string, then what I need to do is play this big whip that gets me up in the air and ready to land down. Now let's put it in the context of this exercise. So we're gonna work still on three note per string kind of ideas, but now we're going to use that sweeping motion with the whip to go from a thick string to a thin string. Let's just use that same geometric shape, flip it around to be three, four, five, right? So now I'm gonna go. So this is really like Frank Gambali style sweeping in a way, but it's a much wider motion and you have a different angle with your right hand. Those upstrokes are pretty exaggerated. So exercise four looks like this. So let's talk about the biggest challenge in the style. Three notes per string going up. This requires the big whip. So I'm going rest, up, big whip. So what you wanna practice is big whip on the thin string and then rest stroke on the adjacent string. But think about it rhythmically on the last triplet. Bim bum, be bum, be bum, be bum, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum. That's the idea. So that's a great exercise. That's exercise five. I'm just gonna go down, up, down, 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 down. I'm really gonna try to focus on those two consecutive downstrokes from the last triplet to the downbeat, going big whip, rest stroke. That's the secret. If you can zone in on that motion and really clean it up, you'll be able to get this in no time. So here's another thing you see constantly in gypsy jazz. You see that triplet shape, the three note per string shape, divided onto two strings. So here's a B diminished triad, starting from F descending. Two notes on the B string, one on the G. That typically goes on a G7 sound, right? It's the flatted seventh, fifth, and third. If I think about that as a unit, it's down, up, down, and internally it has that little sweep. So I'm really thinking about it like rest stroke, up stroke, rest stroke, if it's in a loop, meaning if, if it's coming back to the B string. But it doesn't have to come back to the B string. It can go to a lot of places. I can go from here, let's say, to three notes on the G string. In that case, that whip has to be that double down whip. It can't be that rest stroke whip. This exercise looks like this. First of all, we're just gonna repeat it in a circle. So the next exercise, we're gonna play three notes on the G string after that pattern. gonna play three notes on the D string and you're gonna have to use a big whip. Now this next exercise is gonna be a stock 
Django lick, but now you're going to have the technique to perform it. So it's three groups of three. But now you've learned all these motions that are going to enable you to play this kind of music. Here's a little trick when things get really fast. A lot of times you hear lines like this. One, two, three, four. And you're like, how is that possible to do those double downs in a row? It's not. This is a trick. All that's happening here on the high string is that I'm coming in with a downstroke on the third triplet, but then I'm alternating. I'm going down, up, down, up. And then I'm playing that triplet, which is down, up, down. And the only double down is to resolve. And a lot of times you even resolve on an upstroke when it's really fast. One, two, three. Down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. But in very fast tempos, these guys just do that. And it has a similar kind of sound. But for the slow tempos, you really want to have those lines articulate. If you dig this, we have all the transcriptions and tabs and everything you can dream of, including Django lessons, Sonny Stitt lessons, Robin Ford lessons, Scott Henderson lessons, all kinds of lessons on our Patreon for our patrons, so join us there. Also, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, do all the stuff, and we'll see you next time.